Thanks for joining my talk, creating the AWS account controller, or as I like to call it, your rules don't apply to me. My name is Ian Mackay. I'm, the, uh, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I'm the cloud lead at Kablamo, which is a cloud consultancy and AWS partner. I'm also a member of the Amazon Partner Network Ambassadors, which is a group of technical experts on the platform. And as some of you may know, I like to break some AWS services. So a bit of background on this talk, and I wanted to show where I got the inspiration for this project. A lot of it came from reInvent 2018. There's two talks in particular. The first was a talk from Sam Elmalak, and he talks on the current state of landing zones, particularly about this concept of developer accounts, which are short-term accounts that is used for experimentation or testing that's dedicated for just an individual developer. I thought this was great. And then I saw this talk within the CloudFormation StackSets talk by the head of Amazon Retail, Manu Suresh. And he talks about how they're using short-term accounts within the Amazon Retail sector. They average about 100 new short-term accounts daily. And they have this concept of setting a budget on these accounts. So if the accounts have a runaway cost, then those accounts will get automatically deleted. I thought this was fantastic. And I started to look into this, but I realized it wasn't that simple. Although creating the accounts is pretty easy, deleting is a lot harder. I wrote a post a, a bit on this theory last year called Automating AWS Account Deletion on my blog. And that was a bit of the theory behind this. And today I wanted to go through some of the practice. So what does this look like programmatically? How do we create an account through AWS organizations? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We call organizations.createAccount. We give it an account name, we give it an email, and then that's it. A couple of seconds later, we have our account. So what does this look like when we actually have to delete that account? Well, it turns out it's a bit more complicated than that. We have to find the account's root email address. We have to request a password reset, open the link, click the provided link, set a new password, log in with the password, provide a valid payment method, verify yourself by phone. And after all of that's done, finally, we can delete the account from the U U from the root user. And after that's done, we can remove the account from organizations. What a massive challenge. And I thought, how can we automate this? Is it even possible? Well, I said, challenge accepted. The solution is an open source one. It's available on GitHub today. It's deployable as a single CloudFormation stack with a bunch of parameters to set up your environment. It has flexible component activation which means if you want just the creation piece of this or just the deletion piece of this, you can do that. If you already have a process for creating your accounts, but you still have a problem with deleting your accounts, you can just use the deletion piece of this solution. The solution works around a lot of the AWS API shortcomings that is present in the environments as you'll see in the next few slides. So let's start to go through it. How do we programmatically find the accounts root email address? Again, it's pretty simple. We go, we call organizations.listaccounts. Pretty easy. Then it starts to get a little harder. We need to request a password reset, but there is no API for this. So this is where we start using Puppeteer, a headless browser framework to step through the reset password actions. I use TwoCapture to solve the captures that are presented, which is basically just outsourcing uh, this work. It's two US dollars per thousand souls, so it's fairly economical. I did try to use recognition.detectText to, to solve the capture, and I got a success rate of something like one in 20, which was interesting, but not relevant for this. Next, we have to open the email and click the provided link. To do this, we set up a domain or a subdomain as a root 53 hosted zone to catch all the emails. We add an MX record to point to SES inbound. We have SES place all the email content in the S3 bucket. We have an event rule that invokes the lender with the email content. And the lender reads that body. If the body does not contain a reset link, it'll just forward it off to the account owner or to the master email. And you'll note that the subject line in this example has some extra metadata in the subject line. Things like the account ID, things like the account master email. That's just a value add I add in this solution. If it does contain the reset link, we go to the next step which is setting a root password. Again, we need to use Puppeteer to set the password uh, with that emailed link. The password is generated by CloudFormation and stored in Secrets Manager, so you never actually have to know or 
uh, write down that password. It's all done automatically for you. We also have to provide a valid payment method. So we fill out the billing details with a valid credit card or debit card. In my case, I use a reloadable debit card to keep track of my cloud spend. The details for your credit card are stored in Secrets Manager during the solution setup. Um, so you don't need to expose those uh, details. And something to note, you will get billed at one US dollar, which is $1.65 roughly in Australian, uh, each time you do this verification step. So something to keep in mind, but it's just an authorization charge. It will go away after seven days. Now we need to verify ourselves by the phone. So to do this, when we set up the solution, I use Puppeteer to provision an Amazon Connect instance. It has a Connect flow and an associated phone number. Amazon Connect doesn't actually have any APIs to do this. So again, we have to use Puppeteer to do all this setup. And then we initiate the phone call by entering the Amazon Connect phone number into the Amazon account verification service. The way this works is you're displayed a four digit code on screen and asked to enter that within your phone. This is used, uh, this is done through a process called DTMF. That's the tones that you hear when you enter digits in your phone when you're on a call. Now, Amazon Connect doesn't actually have this feature by default, but what I realized is we can use the prompts feature, which is sort of like an announcement mechanism to dynamically select DTMF wave files, which is just sound, uh, and play that over in an IVR flow. So we have, we read the code and provide it and stored it in the SSM parameter. We have connect dynamically prompt Lambda for that code. And we pick the prompts that are related to the DTMF wave files and play that back. Because DTMF is just sound over the wire, this actually works. And I was so happy this worked. This was a crazy hack. I didn't expect to work at all, but, and, and there is no recording. So I didn't know whether this was going to work, but that moment of getting that tick for the first time, fantastic. Finally, after all those steps are done, we can log into account management with Puppeteer, click four checkboxes and two buttons, and our account is now deleted. Now that our account's deleted, we can call organizations.remove account from organization. However, if you try and do this within seven days of the account creation, that won't work. That'll throw an exception. So instead, if it's younger than seven days, we schedule that deletion for the creation time plus seven days. So that's the deletion process. Now let's look at how we create accounts. And to do this, I've done uh, a custom SAML application within AWS SSO called the Account Manager. The custom SAML application is deployed into SSO, again with Puppeteer because SSO doesn't have any APIs. It processes SSO user requests to create, list, or update the accounts. And for the create action, an asynchronous process goes and adds the SSO user account association and adds billing alarm that automatically terminates accounts if it goes over the threshold, if that feature is enabled. So let's go ahead and look at how this works in practice. So here I'm already logged into SSO. I have an account already assigned to my user and I have the account manager deployed into my uh, user profile. So let's click on this. And you can see that it's signing me in now. And this is doing in the background a SAML uh, assertion to make sure I am who I say I am. And this will bring up uh, information that's contextual to me. So in this case, it shows the account that's already in my account, in my uh, account manager profile. Uh, it gives information such as the account ID, the account email, and some notes. So let's go ahead and create an account. I'm going to create an account called Forward Cloud Tech, and it's always going to be under the profile or the email subdomain that I've set up. Forward Cloud Tech. I'm gonna set a maximum monthly spend of $50, and I can add some notes too. And if I check this box, it means that everyone who also has account access to Account Manager can log into my account. If I don't check this box, then it is just for me. It's a personal developer account. So I'm going to check this box and I'm going to click create account. So in a few seconds, it will create the account. And as you can see, that account's created and given me an account ID. Now that that cre account's created, there'll be two things that kick off. 
One is the asynchronous process, which goes and creates the billing alarm in North Virginia for the account. One thing to note is that uh, if you do this with the organization's role and you do this immediately after account creation, that won't actually work for up to 60 seconds. You'll actually get an opt-in required exception uh, under CloudWatch for that. So you do have to wait a little bit. Once that's done, it'll also uh, create the SSO uh, user to account association with this account. So let's go ahead and look at what this looks like in organizations. So I'll just refresh here. So here's our account and it has a few tags that's attached to it. The first is the account owner GUID, which is unique for the user in SSO. The budget threshold we set before deletion, 50 US dollars. The uh, checkbox as to whether it's shared with the organization or not. The account email forwarding address, which is the master that I've set. Uh, the notes that I've set as well. And this little flag that says whether the SSO creation process has been completed or not. And that'll go true in a few minutes. Going over to our email, we can start to see that these emails will come in. They'll have emails such as welcome to AWS uh, Amazon Web Services and uh, things like password being updated later on in this pre presentation. So let's go back to the account manager. And in a few moments, we should see that created go to create complete. In the meantime, I'm going to go back to SSO. And another thing to note here is that the front end component will poll this uh, front end continuously every 10 seconds until this process is complete. So uh, it, 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 it's done now, thank God. <laughs> and that creation process uh, will go away once the SSO association is complete. So now as I refresh, refresh this, you'll see that that account is now associated with my single sign-on. So I can go into this account now under administration. And this work, works just like any other account. It's just another account associated with your organization. One thing to note is that when you go into these accounts for the first time, it will throw you into Ohio. I don't actually know why that is. And I hope that someone on the AWS service team can actually tell me why that is, because I'm very curious to see why. From here, we can go into CloudWatch and we can actually inspect that billing alarm. One thing you'll notice when we actually look into the billing alarm and we try and uh, inspect it is that the read actions or any uh, manipulation we try and do with this alarm will be denied. And this is because there's an SCP uh, associated with the account. This SCP denies any user action, including the administrative account, uh, from manipulating this, this uh, alarm in any way. So we can't override the alarm. So now that I'm done with that account, I feel like I don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna hit delete. So I click this button, I confirm it, and that'll kick off the process we just described about going ahead and deleting that account, as you can see by the deleting tag there. So moving back into the slides, So some features that I wanted to mention, flexible component activation, like I said, you can only use the create or only use the delete component. Because all of this is automated with tags and event rules, you can just use the create or delete without affecting anything else. It has the customizable email subject format for enriched metadata. You can optionally set a maximum budget limit for any new creation. So I can say for any new user, it must be $100 or less on the budget. I can say that the SCP is restricted from subscription style calls. So that's things like reserved instances or S3 object locks or RAT53 domains. Anything that's a long-term construct, we prevent from uh, executing under these short-term accounts. We can optionally unsubscribe new accounts from marketing emails. So that's uh, emulating the post that occurs when you try and unsubscribe accounts because everyone knows the pain of getting 20,000 emails for you know some marketing campaign that AWS does. And just newly added is the control tower mode, which means that instead of creating accounts with AWS organizations, you can create accounts with the uh, service catalog and have that control the process. So that's also a feature too. And that's my talk. Thank you everyone for listening. 
Uh, I'd love feedback through the bit.ly link you see on screen now. And I hope I'll get some questions from Aaron. Thanks for listening. Couple semi-serious questions, I guess. Um, so the first is about the structure of the tool and the architecture. So um, uh, when the budget is crossed, what do you do? Is it an auto account deletion? Yeah, so as you can see from the diagram on screen right now, the CloudWatch billing alarm will let an SNS topic in the master account know, and that SNS topic will fire the Lambda function to automatically delete the account. There's no warnings that are currently in the solution, although you could add this yourself. It's just a pure uh, delete that happens on the account. So these are not for production style accounts. These are more for developer and sandbox accounts. And um, uh, no, thanks. Um, and then I guess uh, the last thing isn't so much a question. It's more of a comment. Um, I've always wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> are you OK? Uh, let me just read some of the, the the Twitter streams to you here. We oh, have God. crazy automation hacking with eight A's. We have jaw drop GIF. We have the Wayne's World We're Not Worthy uh, uh, YouTube clip. Clever AF, genius, hacky and self-referential and insane. Um, uh, well done. Uh, are you all right? How long did this take? I think including the research that I did uh, previous to this, it took probably three or four months to actually complete everything, including entirely deployable stack and things like that. There are a few challenges I had on the way. I initially had my service limits. Um, by the way, if you do this in a fresh account, your service limits for the amount of uh, accounts you have is about four, including your master. So you have about three attempts at this before you have to uh, request a service limit update. So do that before you try and implement this solution. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things I, I had to come across here. Uh, try to get around using an external service like 2Capture with a bunch of different things, but that didn't work. Uh, there's all sorts of things that can go wrong here, and I've tried my best to accommodate for those, um, but things can still go wrong, and there's a uh, exception flow that will notify a master email if anything goes wrong. Well, this was super fun. Thank you so much for, uh, for bringing this to us and giving us this demo to, to close out the talk. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Man.